Thank you very much. This is the uh, difficult immediately after lunch geek. Um, but I hope we've got a very lively uh, panel, which will keep us entertained for the next 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to let uh, each individual uh, introduce themselves in a moment. But uh, can I just say, for those who don't know me, I edit uh, Estate Agent and Letting Agent today, amongst other uh, publications I write for. And I must say, since uh, doing that job over the last three years, I've been impressed at the uh, scale to which PopTech, almost on a day-to-day -day basis, informs a lot of the major developments and news stories within the industry. Um, if I look at the main two themes over the last couple of years that have agitated, entertained, amused and stimulated uh, the industry, it appears to be things like portals, who owns the data, why do we pay portals then to show the data that we as agents may have collected, uh, and is it right that other portals scrape information off our own websites and so on and so forth? A big debate. The second one, of course, has been online estate agents and whether they are using technology in a way that traditional agents ought to emulate or are they using technology in such a way that they're actually denying the sort of quality of service to the customer that traditional agents have pioneered for many years. And now, I'm beginning to see a similar debate, I think, arising over things like online reviews, which are extremely important as marketing tools for online agents, some traditional agents using them as well, but many others in the industry very skeptical. So these are big debates that are going on involving pop tech on a day-to-day -day basis. So those, I hope, are some of the things we'll explore in the next 45 minutes. I'm keen, and I know James is keen, that we get the maximum number of questions in from um, the audience as well. So do please submit those. Um, we'll come to those in a moment, but if I, for now, if I may, I'd like the panel to introduce themselves as they go along and perhaps to comment on some of those issues, how they work uh, and how they interface with PopTech in their own businesses. So if I could start at the end, please. Hey, uh, I'm Matt from Nested. Uh, I was desperately hoping that Graham would start at the other end. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of going on and engaging too much, I'll give some, some brief comment and then we can come back to me later. Nested, for anyone that doesn't know, that we're, the best way to put it is we're an estate agent who puts our money where our mouth is. We give every home seller a, a guaranteed amount that we'll get for them no matter what. Um, and that means that people who, for instance, know what they need for their next purchase can go and make it now instead of waiting to sell their property. Um, so we let people, you know, effectively buy their next home before they sell their old one. Uh, and we do that. We can either act as the agent ourselves, or a part of the reason I'm here today is we're keen to work with more agents um, and let them sell it and we'll do the guarantee. And I think that's pertinent to, the, to one of the most important things here, which is I think ProcTech is a small piece of the industry. The bits that I think are most interesting are probably how do the new insurgents work with the incumbents to create a better outcome for customers? And that's almost like going to be my answer to every question here, which is um, whatever is right for the customer, right? If customers want online reviews, then you should probably let them see online reviews. If people are searching in that way, then that's what you have to do. Um, and with all of the other things with, you know, should, what should portals do, what should portals not do, again, whatever is right for the customer is, is broadly the answer in my, you know, in my opinion. You can fight that, you can resist that, but ultimately it's going to win out and you probably would have been better off positioning yourself in a way that you did that from the get-go. Um, I'll pass over to Alison. Um, Alison Nineth from um, Andrews Property Group. Um, we have a network of 80 branches um, across the country. Um, we are state agents, letting agents, but also we do uh, leasehold block management and uh, sort of client asset management as well. So um, quite a few strings to our bow. We are going through quite an interesting journey at the moment where I joined Andrews six months ago. Um, and taking the opportunity to revisit the customer experience and the customer journey and seeing how we can um, bring tech into that to give them the best possible experience. So um, days like today, it's our opportunity to, to speak to as many people as possible and see what 
what's available to us, and especially from a sort of a, a stacking perspective of, of numerous um, add-on systems that we can utilise to gain that best experience going forward. So we're at the start of that journey, um, and I'm very lucky to have someone that works with me that, that spends her entire time going out there and finding all the solutions I could possibly use to then be able to make those decisions. So um, very much at the start of, of, a, of a period of change for us. Eric. I'm Eric Walker, as it says so, uh, Managing Director at Northwood. Um, we have strings to our bow from letting sales, which are growing fast. Uh, we do guaranteed rent, like no one else, in my opinion, but I would say that. Um, I don't really care about online agents. Uh, it's not that we're complacent, far from it. Um, I don't really want to knock anyone's business model. Good luck to them. Um, they've got 5% market share and 95% of the headlines. I'd rather focus on the 95% of business that is available to us than worry about what other people are doing. I frankly don't care. Um, from our point of view, what it has done, though, is it's shown us some really good tips for innovative technology. Um, and we're copying it. Everything that's good about them that we think is good, we try and plagiarize and nick. To me, that's how good businesses evolve and grow. Um, but the one thing you can't do, and I, I, I'm going to use this shameful phrase that my brother used, all these virtual tours and everything else, some point you've got to go and look at a house, right? We know that. It, otherwise, I remember my evil ex-wife saying, sorry, um, Charlotte saying that <coughs> um, it's a habit. Uh, I remember her saying when we walked into something that ticked every box, it's great, but it doesn't feel like home. You can't digitize empathy. And that's it. It's a people business and always will be. Eric, can I just, before we move on, can I just tease out of you what have you emulated, or as you put it, copied from online agents? Well, I would argue we haven't copied. I think we've been at the forefront. I mean, the wonderful product that is Fixflow, we were one of the pioneers of that. Uh, live chats through Yomdal, mm -hmm. and I'm not being paid for these endorsements, by the way, but I'm happy to accept any money they want to give. Um, that's worked phenomenally well for us. Valpal is another one. Every time we send it out on a campaign mailer, our traffic spikes. We did all this before online agents were there. And one thing I will say, <clears throat> the internet was invented at the same time for every business out there. All right? It was all invented in around 1990-something that it was rolled out to the high street. You all buy stuff online, don't you? Yeah. Yep. But do you buy your Sunday joint online? There are some things you want to interact with. Okay. Hi, um, my name is Richard. I'm the CEO of a company called Good Lord. Um, so I used to be an estate agent. Um, I used to be a lettings agent. And um, the frustration when I was uh, a lettings agent was that I really liked going out and meeting people and finding them the place they wanted to rent. But actually, most of my time wasn't taken up doing that. A lot of it was sat behind a computer, sending the same emails, doing the same kind of processes over and over again. Um, and also, I just realized that, you know, um, that the tenants were um, not having a great experience um, doing this as well. So we both were not winning. Um, you know, agents are used, uh, or no, tenants are used to buying things on their mobile phone instantly. And um, at the moment, we're just, the consumers and the tenants are just not given the experience that they want. Um, so good Lord, we're kind of on a, a big mission to just help everyone help agents uh, become more efficient and to not do those repetitive tasks over and over and over again and spend more time doing what they're good at and that's out there interacting with people and actually giving them, their customers, a great experience so giving the tenants the ability to do everything they want to do in that transaction on their mobile phone when they want to do it. Um, so we're kind of just out there trying to make renting less shit. <laughs> Hi, so uh, I'm Christian. I'm one of the founding partners of Base Property Specialists. We're a single branch um, agency based in Shoreditch. Uh, we focus primarily on lettings and property management. Um, started the company because I was frustrated by and large with the companies I'd worked with previously with regards to their attitude um, in, part, in part to landlords, but primarily to tenants. I thought the general attitude to tenants within the letting sector was appalling. Um, and sort of set out on a bit of a mission to try and create a company that worked on a different um, approach to that um, full service agency. Um, and early years that was quite difficult, but I think what's been really exciting the last few years is 
with the evolution of tech and prop tech within the sector is uh, actually, I think, it is now easier than ever um, for agents of any size, whether you're a single branch or, or, or a medium or large scale company, to, to really go out and try different things. Um, and I think there's two sides to that. I think there is tech innovation that agents of all sizes can play around with, and I think there's lots of options at varying price scales. Um, but I think what's really important as well, when I talk about innovation within the industry, tech is part of that, but I think it's important that agents leverage the freedom that tech gives, whether that be through automating in-house processes or whatever. The time that frees up, you can allocate some of that to sales services, but I think part of that should also be focused on con creating the best possible consumer experience. I think as agents, we have a responsibility to look out the, outside the technical box of what we do and to really focus on that consumer experience and find out what, you know, what are the things that drive landlords and tenants mad. Um, I mean, one of the things we did um, off the back of that is, is we give all of our managed tenants a free property life skills tutorial now. Um, and that's done free of charge. Um, and those are skills that those tenants will find useful for the rest of their lives. We teach them everything from how to bleed a radiator and top up a boiler to where their fuse box is and stop cock valves and et cetera, et cetera. Um, they've got skills that benefit them for the rest of their lives. Um, what we've now discovered sort of five years later, looking back at the statistics on that, we've seen a reduction in reported maintenance issues of 30%. So we win, our landlords win because they've got reduced costs and tenants get a better experience. So I think, you know, I think it's a really, really exciting time in agency right now. And I think the challenge of online agents, I think as much as there are frustrations with some of the messages being put out there and, and there are definitely issues that need to be addressed there, I think as an industry, I think it's a really exciting time because one thing it has done is it has brought our industry together as a full service industry and it has made us all go right enough's enough. We need to up our game, we need to stop doing the bare minimum for the maximum fee and we actually need to prove true value in what we do and that's not just in the price achieved or the rent achieved but it's about the experience throughout. Great. Well, um, yeah, so my name is Rob Symes, as you can see. Um, I, uh, I work at Rightmove. Um, 12 months ago, my business, The Outside View, was bought by Rightmove. So um, we used to, and we still do now, so we built an algorithm to predict which um, properties were most likely to come to the market in the next period of time, and that enabled the state agents to target those people to try and win valuations or instructions. So just to echo some of the things that have been said here, I think if the last maybe 10 or 15 years of property technology has all been about connecting estate agents with buyers and sellers in kind of a search space. I think the, the next space is going to be in the transaction space, which I think you guys are talking about, which Rich is obviously doing, and so is, um, so is Matt as well. So yeah, that's what I'd say as well. And obviously, I'm really interested to hear what these guys are going to say. Great. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can just pick up one thing that Alison said. Alison um, mentioned at the start that she was interested in looking at potential areas that could be uh, benefiting from pop tech. Have you found anything so far? Yep, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do what you do and drop too many names. But um, yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that um, we've got some in-house solutions. Um, one of the things that's interested me today, um, sitting in on some of the discussions, is how people are working together and integrating together mm -hmm. um, as partners. I think that's been really interesting because actually. One of the concerns is that you can look at various different solutions that then you have to try and integrate. But actually, everyone's already talking to each other. Um, we've been talking to, you know, we've spoken um, to Good Lord, and you're already working in partnership with many other services as well. So I think that, that makes it a lot easier um, that, that, those, mm. that everyone's already um, finding a solution. Um, there's a lot of networking going on at the moment. So um, definitely, we've already started a couple of pilots. Um, this year um, for some tech solutions, which we're really excited about. Right, okay, thank you. Um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, I wonder if I can just ask uh, perhaps the most obvious question of my entire very obvious journalistic career, and that is today, many of you will have noticed that Purple Bricks released um, a trading statement saying that their instruction rate had risen by 83% in the past uh, year, I believe. Um, uh, an extraordinary level of growth, albeit perhaps from a, a relatively modest base until that time. Um, and many of you also may have been across the corridor uh, at a, a session that was held uh, a couple of hours ago, which uh, many people would regard as um, a, a rather robust critique of Purple Bricks, just in terms of this being um, not necessarily the most pop tech savvy organization, but actually it's uh, become the bellwether for many people who see 
revolution in a state agency. I wonder if I can just ask people quickly to say what they think about Purple Bricks and what they think about today's results. Uh, um, it's probably the best answer you get out of anyone. Yeah. No, look, I, my take is simple. It's Ryanair for a state agency. Um, it's 5% today. It's, it, it all gets 20 to 30%, clearly. How much of that is Purple Bricks? How much of that is other online agents? Who knows? But clearly there's demand for it. I personally don't like the business um, for three reasons. Um, one, it's a race to the bottom. Like fees are just going to keep going down, and actually that ends up kind of affecting service. Two, it's an arms race, and you've seen this with Purple Bricks. They just they've got more money than anyone else, so they can just spend more and kind of get more customers. And three, no one likes to fly Ryanair. A little bit of dies inside every time we do it. Um, but yet you go back. Um, so I think it's going to grow. I think that the truth will out. Who knows what percentage they're selling, what percentage they're not. Um, what I do know is that they're one of my best sources of customers. I love it. People pay Purple Bricks a thousand pounds to not sell their house, and they come to me three months later. Um, and sadly, we have to pick up the pieces. Uh, so I think it's going to grow. I think they're going to have to find a way to satisfy customers on an ongoing basis. There's only so long that if they're not doing that, you can continue doing that. What I would also say that it might be obvious, I think you alluded to this, is that they're not. That's if that is two points. Like, well, one thing we sat here talking about prop tech. Like, actually, this is the property industry. It remains the property industry. The technology has always existed in its various guises, and what is new today is, you know, only so is as much better than what was yesterday as yesterday was the, the day before that. So I think we should continue to talk about ourselves as the property industry and think about how technology can augment that. One thing I would be clear about with with Purple Bricks is that that's not a technology business. You know, I've founded a technology business. That is not a technology business. That's an estate agent without a shop front. Um, and going back to what I said, all my answers would end with is the only way that business is successful, which it can be, is if they're producing great outcomes for customers. Clearly, there is demand for that type of service. Whether they are producing those great outcomes, not yet clear, but someone's going to do that. And whether that's existing agencies offering hybrid and going and offering an online version or new insurgents, like who knows? But whoever gives a great outcome for customers is going to win in the end. Um, Great. That's a really interesting view from somebody operating, you know, what you d yourself described as an insurgent uh, operation within the industry. That's a really great view. Alison? Um, yeah, I mean, they, they will continue to gain traction. Um, and there is, I mean, they've got a, a phenomenal marketing budget that I'm sure a lot of people in the room wish they had. But um, I, I mirror um, the comments of it's all about customer service and the end result. And what we don't hear about a lot about is actually a, a, a the end transactions and, mm. and how well they mm. do from that. Their marketing mm. campaign is very much driven around new business and driving new business um, to use them. Um, so, you know, in, from a, I guess, the word traditional um, perspective, for me, it's all about customer service. We do pick up a lot of um, failed um, clients that you've used online agents mm. um, and who are, have used it, been driven very much by fee, and that's where it does affect us it, 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 from a fee perspective. So it's about us learning, ensuring that we can still try show where we drive value um, by not being online. But there is also mm. a balance between the two. Yeah. Eric? Well, I would argue the most expensive agents in London um, are some of the most successful. And I, I, mm. you remember the words of Maya Angelou, you, people forget what you do, they forget what you say, but they never forget how you make them feel. And I think it's very difficult to make people feel good remotely. But hey, that's just my view. Um, purple bricks are a phenomenon, good luck to them on their results, but they've got to sustain it. Um, They've got the big, ambitious American project, of course, which is really what's supporting the, the hope uh, in their share price. And good luck to them. I mean, they've, they've got a 5% market share. You show me one other online business that's market share has actually dropped over the last 12 months. You know, two years ago, they were just over 6%. Mm. Um, and what Purple Bricks have done brilliantly is they have expanded far more in the online space. They're not necessarily taking it away from the high street. Will they? Well. I don't think price, we're not selling fixed price products. We're not buying the cheapest product out there, you know? If, if somebody's going to get you an extra 20 grand for your house and it costs you 1%, so what? It's a good investment. 
So I wish them all the best. Um, I do think, however, online agents, I do not believe, will generate 30% market share um, because the space isn't growing as fast as people predicted. Remember, it wasn't long ago that um, Easy Property had a funeral for all <laughs> us high street agents, um, and they weren't going to float in the stock market until they were worth a billion quid. That went well. No. Uh, before we continue the answer to this, I wonder if I can throw in one of the questions from the audience as well, which seems relevant to the same debate. And it was that, um, I think it's just gone off to your screen now, but it was that as 98% of property transactions appear to start on Rightmove or Zoopla, how can agents, and I think this must mean traditional agents, justify their 1.5%, as was put in the question, their 1.5% uh, commission? So what are views from... I, I would just use the phrase customer service. That what's changed, and I think Foxton's one of the first people to recognise this with their reputation, <clears throat> is the single most important thing we do is the customer journey, the customer service. Um, and I, I think that's something that if we focus on, I, I, I don't see the threat being as cataclysmic as people are saying. I just don't. Okay. I, think, I think there's also an interesting yep. point as well. We're, we're rather obsessed in this country with the fees that agents charge, 1.5%. If you actually look at the global real estate mm. industry, Britain is cheap. Yep. Um, most countries you will pay yep, on average around 5%. Right. There are countries where you pay as high as 10% to sell your property. 1.5% <coughs> is peanuts. And when you consider that that is a purely a results-based fee, where you have, in most instances, absolutely no upfront costs, um, and you only pay that fee on a result, I actually think um, the public are slightly misled in the fact that actually that represents incredible value rather than a staggering price tag. That's good. And actually, that addresses one other question we've had uh, come in about whether Purple Bricks and other online agents are deemed to be good value because traditional agents haven't, if you like, shown people how good value they actually are. And that was a really good well, answer to that question. The statistic question. you picked up earlier, you know, Purple Bricks louting that they've uh, grown 83% on instructions. That's utterly irrelevant for their clients. All that, that's yeah. great for them in terms of revenue. They've yeah. secured an 83% increase in, in internal revenue, mm. but they've not released statistics about yeah. an increase in conversion rates for sales. Um, they've not um, released any statistics that show in any way that they, they achieve better sale prices than, than traditional agents do. Yeah. Um, all they're saying is that they've grown, um, but it is becoming um, harder and harder to ignore the fact that their success rate, which is primarily what clients ins instruct them for, which is to actually sell a property, yeah. those figures are dubious. Okay. Um, Right, let's move on, if we can, please, to one uh, other question. An interesting um, look at the letting sector. We've got um, a question asking, how can PropTech improve the tenant experience after the move is complete? Now, obviously, we're aware that um, all sorts of things can help you find, locate, and check a uh, lettings property. But what about afterwards? Please go. So, so I think we could do a lot, uh, is the short answer. I can only tell you about my experience um, moving into a property uh, recently um, from when I was uh, in there, met by the inventory clerk, trying to put down that it had been professionally cleaned, but then saying, yes, that is dirty over there and it's dirty over there, but I'll put down as it's professionally cleaned, but with dirt. Um, so, and... <laughs> Yeah, um, but look, I, think, I think a lot of it, I think we can, there's two sides. I think a lot we can, um, we can make better from actually um, better uh, aggregation of data. Um, so I think one thing that we're trying to learn is, um, I think with my, so if, if I take another example, um, moved into the property and the blind was broken. Now. I told the agent, that's not, I, I would put money on, that's not the first time the agent would have heard that that blind's been broken. It would probably been told to someone else and then got lost along the way. Um, and I think if we um, start to have better integrated systems um, that talk to each other and have a, a better, uh, richer data set, um, then we'll be able to give tenants a better experience from, you know, um, are things fixed um, and, and things like that. I mean, so I think really the key to it is, um, is the data exists out there, but I think if it's 
uh, put together and it's, it's made open and more transparent, then I think that will drive a, a lot of, a, a much better tenant experience. And then kind of further uh, more from that, you've obviously got the, um, uh, you've got your kind of utility bills and things like that, where you still have to go to each individual sites online and remember your mm. passwords every single time. And, and that's only been something new that you've been able to pay your bill online relatively soon. So I think really having one place as a tenant that you can go to, which has got all the data and all the information, mm. um, I think that will be a massive, uh, uh, there'll be lots of other companies that will build off that data to really make this experiential. Yeah. Um, it will make it a lot better. Yeah. So. Alison, you wanted to come in. Um, yeah, just um, obviously I'm in the gathering of information stage at the moment and um, I've been really surprised by the amount of tech already out there um, available. So from a property management um, perspective, you know, being able to interact with tenants on different levels, we've seen, you know, being on the high street, yes, people can phone us and can come in and see us, but having interactive online systems where on an app you can um, you know, report your maintenance is essential going forward. But also the community um, application, so um, on the block management, build direct se sector, having um, online um, community sites, so as a, where as a block, you know, um, you can interact with each other in, as a community online, I think are, are really big steps forward um, from a tech perspective as well. Um, so being, I mean, as a tenant, having many op um, different options to be able to interact with mm -hmm. each other, interact with your agent and, and sometimes with your landlord. You know, everyone, everyone lives differently, so you've, you've got to give them the different sort of opportunities yeah. to be able to do so. Yeah. But some of the, uh, yeah, the online community um, um, availability is quite phenomenal now. Yeah. So, I mean, we've, we've had a really great response within our business um, using the property file product, which originally was e-property file and my property file, and it's now property file. Um, and we really like two aspects of that. There's, there's a sort of landlord portal side, and we find that about half of our landlords live abroad, and they're either British residents living abroad or foreign investors. Um, and that really tackled a time-sensitive issue. Um, when we found clients, we would often come in and have an email from a client on the other side of the earth who sends us an email saying, I'm sat in my accountant's office and I can't find last May's invoice help. Um, and obviously, we wouldn't be able to help until the next day, um, by which time they'd already left the accountant's office, obviously. Um, and, you know, that made that really pivotal information accessible straight away. And we've had great feedback from that. And then the addition of the tenant app, uh, which went out last year, we've had fantastic feedback from that. And actually, the, the most common comment we've had from tenants with that is, why doesn't every agent have this? <laughs> um, and it's that ability, again, it's, <coughs> It's, it's splitting the service that you get, right? There's, there's no digital-only solution that is going to tick all the boxes. Um, but again, one of the biggest issues we find dealing with tenants resolving maintenance issues is during the working day, the vast majority of our tenants can't answer personal phone calls or take personal emails during their working day. So how do you keep that communication channel open? Um, and so they can report an issue through that, which through our software, we can progress that through the four key stages of acknowledgement, um, landlord approval, mm -hmm. the scheduling of the visit, and completion, and they get a push notification instantly at their desk. Um, right from the point, and actually I find the acknowledgement function on that is the most important, because most tenants, it's just knowing that you know and you're yeah. dealing with yeah. it. Obviously, they want to see it progress, but it's just those little things, and it just resolves those little bits. And, and we've spent a lot of time customizing the maintenance reporting element of that. You know, we looked at um, the top 10 um, most common reported issues. Um, and the vast majority of those are issues that probably six, seven times out of 10, the tenant could self-resolve with the knowledge. And whilst we tried to give them that knowledge with the tutorial at the start, what we then did was customize a lot of the content with YouTube videos and checks and things, um, which not only helped them resolve it, but what it then means is we get a report that says they've done X, Y, and Z. So that we can then in confidence go to our landlord and go, look, they've checked the three things, this is the call-out charge. Can we get a contractor out today, tomorrow? Um, and we do that. And that, that instant communication for less attritious things, which is the vast majority of issues if you run your agency well, um, is great. And tenants absolutely love that. Great. I wonder if I can uh, try to pull together two questions, both of which I think have just fallen off the um, screens. But uh, the questions were, what uh, technology have you, uh, your respective organisations tried to introduce in the last year that may have improved 
whether it's something back office or front office. And secondly, uh, are there barriers to introducing additional technology that you want to introduce, that you think would improve your service, but for whatever reason, you can't do it? Uh, can we start, start here? No. Um, um, no that's yeah. fine. Uh, so, yeah, well, I don't, in terms of new technology, I don't think we've introduced a huge amount, but I've only been at right for mm. 12 months, so it's difficult for me to answer that. But, I mean, things like Slack are useful. But I think that actually the, the key point that you guys are making, which I think is important, is that technology is just a tool, right? There are things that we, we call it like a high-tech, low-tech paradigm. So the best businesses in the last 10, 5, 10 years, like Airbnb and Uber, have all been about taking high technology stuff, difficult stuff, like putting things on a smartphone and teaming it with low technology stuff, people, right? So the fusion of this is the most important thing. So for, for agents, that's the most important thing. It's like, when do you actually want to speak to people and when do you never want to speak to people? So I never want to speak to people when I'm, per person when I'm a tenant because it's hard to get hold of landlords. Whereas when, when, I'm, when I do want to speak to people, you know, when I'm negotiating or whatever, that's when I want to speak to people. So for me, that empathy stuff's really, really important. And I only want to use technology that actually helps me get a better result back to Matt's classic. Mm -hmm. who's, the, who's the most important person, the customer? Mm -hmm. Chris? Oh, right. Um, most important bit of tech that's helped us. I mean, I, for me, I found as an agency, it, it really isn't one thing. And I know that's a bit of a cop out mm. from what I've just said. But I, I do find it is the stringing together of various elements of bit of tech to address, even make small changes. You know, it's that old saying, lots of small changes make a big change overall. Um, and I think that's the thing. I think um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're slow to adopt tech, then I think there are larger solutions that can maybe drive bigger change faster. But if you're already delivering a fairly good service and you've got a fairly good client retention, I think you've, you've got to then look at the small increments. And so I think it's not so much focusing on one thing, but it's focusing on multiple things that you can adopt across various parts of the agency that cumulatively create an overall much better experience. But don't, don't, you think, sorry, but don't you think that we get really excited about technology? We're like, let's do electric cars. Yeah. Why does anyone care? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, let's do chatbots. Maybe it's cool, but does it actually work? It yeah, actually and I think, um, I think also with, with um, I think tech can be seen as a bit of a sort of Hail Mary, a, yeah. a, a solves all problems thing, and it, it's not. Uh, it can be, it can solve big issues, but by and large in the industry, again, it solves small issues. And I've had several chats today with people saying that, you know, there's, there's lots of interesting companies here, they're all being very specific on specific areas. And I think that's actually great, I think, because there are very specific areas of expertise and by pooling and collaborating, which there is a very nice discussion about happening within the industry, both as agency and tech. Um, I think there's a really interesting um, evolution um, coming over the coming years um, that will drive that shift. But yeah, fundamentally, it still comes down to the hands-on service. Right. Richard? Um, one bit of tech that's kind of changed apart from good north, um, it's, it's probably been the introduction um, of Salesforce. Um, uh, I'm not getting paid to say that, but a lot of people have a lot of bad experiences. Um, but it's been really good for us because we spent a lot of time thinking about what we needed and why we wanted it in and how it was going to work together. And for us, when we first started off, we were in very fragmented, lots of different systems and popping in and out. Um, and we spent a long time um, getting Salesforce in and a few other things, um, just so we had one, set, uh, one point of information. So whatever the uh, information that our sales team were, was getting, um, the support team could see and the support team could see exactly, you know, and everyone could kind of see the whole data set of one client. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's, that was, that's been really, really important to us, is getting in that kind of aggregated data um, so that we can kind of sit down and really see what's going on in the business instantly. Eric? Well, I don't think there's any barriers. And one thing I, I learn every time I go to um, a conference like this is how fantastic the prop tech providers are at being able to deliver something that I can actually work. Um, it's just incredible how they do it. You know, I, I think technology is absolutely key to our business, but it's not driving our business. Um, where technology is really good is it makes us more efficient and it makes us provide a better service. 
Um, I think that with the changes that all those of you who are agents face, particularly, for example, the imminent ban, inevitable ban on fees, you're going to have to look at how much business you're going to lose. You're going to have to be more efficient. And that's where technology is our friend. Um, it's time-saving. What people want is they don't want to wait five, ten days to get their reference through. They don't want to wait two weeks to move into a property. If we can streamline that process so they can look at the property on the Monday and move in on the Wednesday, how fantastic would that be? And that's why we need technology. Alison? Um, yeah, we've, um, in the last three months, um, been working um, on, with, with two tech companies. Um, one is... Um, sort of live chat, so we are interacting um, directly with people who want to interact with us online um, to provide solutions, which will, it in turn drives us more um, um, customers. However, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't remove the need for us to pick the phone up and to speak to them and then convert those into the right sort of elements of the business. And as a group, it gives us a chance to talk to them about all parts of our business. Um, so we're, we're working with them, but also um, an onboarding company. So from the first point of a tenant saying, I'd like to take this property through to move in, it's a streamlined process um, uh, for, uh, online um, to make their experience um, as good as it can be. Again, that doesn't take away from um, having to provide an amazing service. Um, in fact, it just gives um, the teams more time to speak to people on a personal basis because mm -hmm. the actual process, the paperwork, um, the referencing process is, is so streamlined that they can actually, it almost gives them permission to give people more um, time on a one-on-one -on -one basis to speak to them, um, it therefore increasing the customer service levels. And that's, that's what we're trying to get out of, of introducing tech, really. It's giving, giving the, the guys in the branches more time to talk to people on a personal basis um, and provide a bit more transparency, I suppose, about on, on the service that we can provide. So, yeah, we're... we're